Hey guys, welcome to Fantasy Football Academy 2020. As always, I'm the host of the Dean, and I know you're looking at me going, there's something different, Dean. There's something different. Yeah, I shaved. Well, guys, this just goes along with today's theme of the show, re a review and adjust, and uh, you got to change things up. You know, we're about halfway through the season. I've told you guys I'm going to go back and look at some of my older uh, mock draft episodes where and see who I was high on, who I was low on, and tell you guys who I was wrong or right on. So I went back and I reviewed, and we're also going to talk about uh, using the tools that are available to us in getting the best environment knowledge that we can to make our decisions on a week to week basis. And this is why it's important to be in multiple. Uh, formats. So the format that we have for our league of record is the NFL fantasy app uh, sponsored by the NFL. But there's I'm also in a listener league, which is on Yahoo. So if you are on Yahoo, I'm going to show you a little trick uh, that you might not be aware of that you might not uh, be taking in full advantage of that is we've actually had a perfect example of in this last week uh, when week six with the Chiefs and the uh, the Bills game that di uh, dictated the game script and eventually the outcome are one high valued player. We're going to get into that in just a second, but I would like to thank my sponsors, Zia of Lafayette. Uh, if you guys are in the Lafayette area, please go down to Zia. They're on Doucette Road right behind the Grand Theater off of Johnson and right in front of Red Laurel's Health Club. Go down and find them. You can call them 406-0013 if you want to place your order. Or if you want to come in and dine with us, dining room has been open for quite some time. And we actually do have some new menu items coming out. Uh, we have a chicken quesadilla. We have a Memphis barbecue panini. It's absolutely phenomenal. And some ancho coffee barbecue ribs. I know it sounds weird. Come on down and try and check them out, guys. But look. Let's dive into this. Oh, and I also want to thank my other sponsor. I can't forget those, these guys. These are the uh, the sweetness of our show, Keller's Bakery off the Youngsville Highway in Lafayette. You can find them at 627 Lafayette Street, like I said, off the Youngsville Highway. You can also find them on Facebook. Uh, go to Keller's Bakery and you can place your order there. Uh, and remember, tell them the Dean sent you, get you two free cookies. And uh, let me know down below when you guys subscribe, like, and share for me what flavor you got and how they work. I know they're going to be phenomenal. You guys need to find out. Okay. So I went back to my mock draft and it was the mock draft Monday team build Tuesday episode. If you guys go down and subscribe for me, uh, you can scroll back into the, through the history of the show and you can go ahead and look at that episode and see what I'm talking about. But on that particular episode, we were going from the third position in a 12-man league. And we took Saquon number one because that's who fell to us. In that particular draft, it was Christian McCaffrey one, Zeke two, and then we took Saquon at three. Now, needless to say, it wasn't that we were wrong on Saquon, but the injury bug bit and bit hard. Um, so we lost Saquon. In the beginning of the year, he really wasn't what we thought he was going to be. There were some kinks that were getting worked out. He was kind of getting into a rhythm and never really got going before he got hurt. So that was a bust. Then we took Lamar in the second. Um, that in and of itself, I'm not going to say a disappointment because Lamar is currently the QB8. So if you can get the QB8 on your team, and then hit on a wide receiver and a, and a running back, you're doing pretty good. But the price that you had to pay to get Lamar, if you took Lamar Jackson early, as I did, uh, I had to take him with the number one spot. Uh, I was in number one spot for our league of record. I was in the, the last spot in my listener league for uh, 12. I took Julio and Devontae Adams. Uh, I was happy with Adams. I'm getting happier with Julio. I was not thrilled until his breakout game where he scored about a gazillion points and ran for, 
I think he's still running somewhere. Uh, and he actually scored two touchdowns. So that was very un um, So uh, also in that episode, if you listen closely, I called Alexander Madison a wide receiver. If you guys catch me on those down below, leave a comment, call me out on that stuff. Okay, guys. Um, so that was kind of funny. But it's amazing what happens when you go back and review and, and see where you did wrong and where you did right. We had quite a few bright spots. Uh, let's go over the low points first. Um, I want to get into it. Joe Mixon uh, looks on the surface that because I was really, I was kind of hard on Joe Mixon, um, der, deser, uh, deservedly so, because if you take away, let's just say that you take away that 43 point performance Let's just give him a 20-point performance in that breakout. He goes from the RB8 to the RB21 through week six. Now, if you have a first-round pick and you took Joe Mixon, he had a less than a seven-point performance. It was like 6.8 or something like that. The game right before he blew up. And even after that, he had like he had a 14-point performance. I think he had another 15-point performance. But those performances prior to that, okay, he was facing stack boxes. Joe Burrow was starting to come through. And as I said, if you listen in the, the episodes that I did where I talked about Joe Mixon, which were pretty much all of them because he was involved heavily in the first round in a lot of drafts, um, he, I told you, he was going to face stack boxes. He was going to have a hard time until Joe Burrow got going. When Joe Burrow got going, then the defense was going to have to loosen up. They were going to have to step back and they were going to actually have to account for Joe Burrow's accuracy between, and then what we were thinking is it was going to be AJ Green, Tyler Boyd, and John Ross. Subsequently, since the draft, since the season has started, it has become Tyler Boyd, uh, T. Higgins, and A.J. Green. Uh, John Ross has been relegated to a bench spot and has actually requested a trade out of Cincinnati because he's not happy not playing, which I don't blame him. Uh, the speed and the skill that this guy has can be better utilized in another spot. Um, idea off the top of my head, Philly uh, decimated by wide receiver uh, injuries might be a landing spot for him. The trade deadline is coming up and they're talking a lot about trading certain players. Make sure you're keeping an eye on that. If you see that your your player on your squad is up for a trade, or somebody that you might think had uh, that might have been thinking about letting go, uh, Zach Ertz is a name that I've that I've heard being thrown out there. So, guys like that who have had big potential who aren't doing relatively well, if they are on your waiver wire, if you have a spot stash them. I've heard Des Bryant's name thrown out for Baltimore. If he goes to Baltimore, I wouldn't be too thrilled about that just for the simple fact that Lamar's not really passing that much. Now, I don't know if that's lack of options or if that's game plan. Uh, we know that in the offseason, there was talk about upping his passing, uh, his passing attempts. Uh, so, Something to keep an eye on. Uh, Des Bryant might be worth a roster spot if you have the space. However, this season, roster spots are at a premium. So keep that in mind. Okay, guys. Um, as I said, he's had three TDs on. Uh, Joe Mixon has had three touchdowns on the year. Uh, so about half the time he's scoring a touchdown. But you're not, you weren't really happy with the production prior to that 43 point performance he had i believe 8 12 and 6 uh 6 points and then after that he's had i believe 14 and 15 um 
but there's no way. I mean, I traded him. <laughs> I know I traded him away. Um, I traded actually for him. Then I traded him away and I got Henderson. Um, so that story is yet to be written on who got the better end of that deal for that week. It was definitely my opponent. Uh, I actually wound up losing that game. So cautionary tale there, guys. Um, oh, real quick tip. Don't trade with someone who you're facing that week. Okay. Uh, if you do, you're going to run the risk of it biting you in the butt. Trade away after you face them. Okay. Then you don't have to worry about the repercussions. Uh, all you have to do is worry about losing a good performance, as I did. So I'm here for you guys. I'm making mistakes. I'm not perfect. I'm Like I said, I'm just like you guys. Been there, done that. I do overthink sometimes. So uh, Stephen D uh, Stephon Diggs. Stephon Diggs is a wide receiver that I was not particularly high on just for the simple fact of his quarterback play. If you go, and this is why I say, Ignore statistics. Um, look at the environment. This was Josh Allen's second year. If you watched him last year, uh, you saw him making strides. He was extremely inaccurate. However, he did make that leap this season to being a more accurate passer. He is making uh, Stefan Diggs the wide receiver four on the year through week six. Uh, he's had no game under 14 points. So if you took a shot on Stefan Diggs on the skill set, and remember, guys, I, I've told you before, and I actually said in the episode that I went back and looked at that uh, opportunity plus talent is going to equal results. So Stefan Diggs got the opportunity, he had the talent, and you were seeing the results. So if you had, if you took a flyer on Stefan Diggs, uh, then you're extremely pleased. The next player that I wasn't particularly high on because of the holdout talk at that time, along with the way that the club was acting, lack of a better word, uh, was Aaron Jones. Um, Aaron Jones, they drafted A.J. Dillon. There was talk of holdout. He wasn't really happy where he was at. Then he got paid. A.J. Dillon really hasn't been uh, in the equation. And that led me to question other rookie running backs. J.K. Dobbins, again, not really a big question. But in the preseason draft season, it was expected that he was going to contend with Mark Ingram. Uh, even with Ingram uh, hobbled, he has not been lighting things up at all. Uh, and then we also look at uh, DeAndre Swift, with the exception of last week's performance. Again, nothing big happening in Detroit, where Adrian Peterson is actually making a statement. Uh, and actually, he was performing you know, relatively well, at least well enough to be a streaming option some weeks. Uh, my boy, Cam Akers, Cam was just hit hard with the injury bug. Uh, he got dinged up and then he is also the victim of a backfield by committee uh, between him and Henderson. Uh, and they throw in a couple of other guys in there and it's just, it's a mess in the Rams backfield. Jonathan Taylor uh, has been, uh, he performed well a couple of times. Uh, Naheem Hines kind of took his, his glory uh, one or two games, but the, the Colts look like they're perfectly content in making Blankenship their kicker, the MVP of their team, along with their team defense. Uh, their defense has been shut down absolutely phenomenal. Uh, they had a they have a bye week this week, uh, so they are out of action. But 
with the way that they were they were performing, the way the defense is going, uh, it looks like they're not really wanting or needing to score points to win games. Uh, they're perfectly content with letting their defense score, uh, having Rivers throw every now and then, and that's about it. Their tight ends have actually been the bright spot of this offense. So if you had Mo Ali Cox, you know, the one or two games that he was available. Um, and then for the life of me, I cannot remember their other tight end. Let's take a look real quick. Scroll down real quick, guys. Trey Burton. That was the other uh, other name that I wasn't remembering. Uh, Trey Burton had a big game with Mo Ali Cox out. Uh, let's look at his game log real quick. Uh, yeah, 58 yards and a touchdown uh, in the absence of Mo Ali Cox against Cincinnati. So that was the, uh, that's the one game where he actually, they actually scored some points there. Um, and then you see the 19 to 11 that against Chicago, that should have been probably a little better, but that was a game where, like I said, they were perfectly content in having, um, having their kicker just blow the game up. He was, uh, I believe he had like 20 points that, that game. So Okay. Now let's get into the highs, the guys that I was, that I was high on that we actually hit on. We, we spoke about Saquon and the injury bug and you cannot predict injuries. There's guys who are injury prone uh, like Dalvin Cook. That's why uh, Alexander Madison was high on my stash list. However, like I said earlier, with the way that the season has gone, with roster spots being at a premium, you really probably couldn't hold Madison uh, unless you were just hitting on all cylinders. And hey, if you were, kudos, congratulations to you. Uh, I'm happy for you. Uh, one of the guys that I, that I was really high on was Calvin Ridley. And I told you guys time and time again, as we did mock drafts, that Calvin Ridley was going to have a breakout year and it has come to fruition. It is here. I did not think that the Atlanta defense was going to be so obliged to help out and be as horrible as they are, uh, forcing the offense to score as many points and for uh, Matt Ryan to favor Calvin Ridley as much as he has, making him the wide receiver one through week six. Um, also on my list for wide receiver was uh, Deontay Johnson. However, Deontay Johnson has been hobbled by injury, making him the wide receiver 85. So that was somebody that I was really high on that has not really come through. Chase Claypool has actually sprung into the scene and if you were lucky enough to grab him off of waiver wires, congratulations. You probably now have the Pittsburgh Steelers number one option at wide receiver until Deontay Johnson gets back fully, uh, fully healthy. Um, another guy that I was really high on, uh, Lamar Jackson. Uh, he, like I said, he's currently the QB eight, but you probably aren't happy with that just for the simple fact that you were drafting a top three QB, at least that performance. And if you're getting a, a QB eight performance, you're not happy spending that high of a draft pick on him. Uh, but the name and the potential 
if you're not happy with it, are a great trade bait to go out to someone who maybe you're hurting at wide receiver or running back or both. And you can take, let's say, Lamar Jackson and a, let's just say, uh, a piece, uh, a dangler like Tim Patrick. Uh, Tim Patrick's out there. He's doing well. And he might not be a name that a lot of people know. He's a wide receiver out of Denver. But with Cortland Sutton out, he is actually he's really, really, really stepped up into the number one receiver role. Uh, he and Jerry Judy are kind of going back and forth with that role. Um, but I doubt that somebody's going to want to part with Jerry Judy. If you have Tim Patrick and you have Lamar Jackson, you could package that into probably a top receiver or a top running back. And whichever one you do that's top, you can get a mid-tier uh, other one. Like you could do a top receiver and a mid-tier running back or a top running back and a mid-tier receiver for Lamar Jackson and Tim Patrick to kind of, you know, get the pot a little, a little sweeter for your opponent that you're trying to trade with. Now, finding a trade partner is tricky because you you guys know your league better than I do. There are certain guys in my league that I do not try to trade with. One, I know they're not going to go for it. And two, nine times out of ten, they're doing better than I am. Their record's better than I am. They're happy where they're at. They don't need a trade. So here's what you do. You go and look at the bottom of the, of the league. In my league where I'm, it's not my league of record, it's my listener league with 103.7 The Game, local radio station here in Lafayette. Hey guys, um, you look at the bottom and it, it's really hard on in this league because there's two guys that are one and five. Everybody else is three and three, except for the leader and one other team. Uh, the leader is six and zero. Oh, uh, HTTR, uh, Mr. Joe, congratulations. I'll see you. I'm coming for you. Uh, I, I love that you're repping the skins. The one bad part I have about his team is that he's repping my Washington team with like three Cowboys on his team. So I'm really not happy about that. I want to pull his Washington card, but I can't because he's number one. Uh, there's also a four and two team in a 12 man league. You have four teams that are not three and three. So you've got a third of the league or two thirds of the league that are at three and three, which means that you have to look at who has injuries, who's dealing with buys uh, and who needs help where uh, that's opposite you. So, but like I said, I look at those one in six teams. I look at who they have uh, there. There's going to be that one guy that they're not going to get rid of because he's carrying that team. He's the only bright spot and they're not going to part with him. But you look at his second best and you could probably get him to bolster your team, okay? So, that being said, for Lamar Jackson, we're going to go and uh, go back to wide receiver. DK Metcalf uh, was a guy that I was really high on, and I told you guys when it came down to DK Metcalf or Tyler Lockett that I was all about DK Metcalf. DK Metcalf through week six is the wide receiver eight. Um, so, he is doing really, really well. If you drafted DK Metcalf, you are extremely happy with that decision. You probably wound up getting him uh, maybe fourth through the sixth round, depending upon how your your draft fell. Um, I'm trying. I'm scrolling down here. His teammate Tyler Lockett is actually the wide receiver 17. So. Tyler Lockett was going a, a lot later and just through week six, deservedly so. Uh, the production for DK Metcalf has just been higher. Um, you know, through the season, he's just gotten more touchdowns, more yardage, more points. So um, another guy that I was high on, I was talking about Cam Newton. Cam was a backup role uh and actually, in the episode that I'm, I went back and reviewed, uh, I took him to back up Lamar. 
uh, Cam Newton is right now through week six is the QB 26. So definitely a backup role and a streaming option only at this point. Uh, the last guy that I'm going to, uh, I'm going to mention here uh, is Justin Jefferson. And if you, I went back and I watched this episode. I know I spoke highly of, Je of Justin Jefferson. Uh, I'm in Louisiana, so I saw him play in college. Uh, we watched him through LSU. And when he went to Minnesota, I said in this episode that he had the best potential, the best environment around him to succeed because he was coming into a position where he was sliding into Stefan Diggs' role. Uh, Adam Thielen was already established, so he was the number one guy. Um, I'm, I'm looking right now at what Thielen is doing. Thielen is actually the wide receiver three. So if you took a shot on Justin Jefferson and you see him at wide receiver seven, his teammate at wide receiver three, that means that he's still getting the no, – more than likely than not, he's getting the number two coverage man when the teams, you know, match up against them. That Adam Thielen still has to be paid attention to, even though Justin Jefferson has more of the big play potential than Adam Thielen. You could have gotten both of these guys, and this is not something that I, I advocate often, but you could have gotten both of these guys, started them both, and been very happy with the results. So, point of today's episode, review and adjust. There are certain expectations that we had for players coming into the season that have actually been either confirmed or shattered. If they've been confirmed, awesome. Great job. Congratulations. If you suffered from the injury bug, please pay attention to the waiver wire. And right now it's looking a little thin. This is the time for trades. You must start trading now because later in the season, there are going to be guys who you might want them. And the guys have such a big lead that they're not going to give them up because they want to keep that going into the playoffs. Uh, you have guys who are on the verge. If you have that one or two teams that are just horrible, they wind up at, let's say one in, they're going to be one in eight by through, you know, in the next couple of weeks here. Um, those guys probably don't have a shot at your playoffs but if you're in a league like my listener league and actually like my league of record, there is a jumble in the middle. Top six in our league of record get into the playoffs. So you're talking about four teams and nine times out of 10, those teams don't have anybody that you want outside of maybe one or two big ones. But to do that trade, and this is something that commissioners have to keep an eye on too, is that I don't know if your league has this, if, you know, uh, but there's kind of an honor system where you don't just dump all your good players right before the playoffs because you're not going to make it. Uh, but that's something that you, you know, we can talk about. Hit me up in the comment section your thoughts on that kind of behavior. Um, I personally don't care for it, but that's just me. Um, we're going to get into real quick. I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to show you guys the um, – the trick that you can use if you're on another platform to make better decisions for your team. So let's get into this. Cross this out. Um, and this is my Yahoo League. This is not my league of record. Um, but if you look at up here at the top bar, you're going to see, it says league, my team, matchups, players, research, draft, stat tracker, fantasy shop. Go to research. If you're on Yahoo, uh, let me move this real quick. There we go. So go to research and you look down here and you see where it says weather. So you scroll down 
And there's something very interesting this week that I found out looking over this last night. If you look at look at the precipitation and it gives you the percentage of the forecast for that game, okay? Now, Buffalo and the Jets, look, <laughs> you already know the Buffalo is going to crush this one. And here's the thing. We talked about Justin Jeffrey or uh, talked about Stefan Diggs being, you know, the wide receiver. He's a wide receiver four. Okay. So he's the wide receiver four. So you're like, oh, man, this is a great matchup. Here's the thing. It's only a great matchup if they need digs in the game. If this game becomes such a blowout because you know that the Jets are tanking, they're shipping players off left and right, they're releasing players a la Le'Veon Bell, you're looking at this going, man, on the surface, this is a great matchup. Yes, it is for Josh Allen. For Stefan Diggs, this could be one of those 14, meh, cool, good, you know, good performance. This might not lead to that 20, 30, 40 point performance that you're talking about all year. Why? Because the Jets suck. The defense is horrible. Buffalo is phenomenal. Their defense is going to keep the score low. So if you have Buffalo's defense, congratulations. Um, but this is one of those games It's not, it's going to be you know, saying here, mostly, mostly sunny, high 53, low 42. This is perfect football weather guys. Okay. Now we scroll down here just a little bit farther and we see it like yesterday, it was a 50% chance of, uh, precipitation. Today, it's a 40% chance. This is something to keep an eye on. Why? Because if it becomes a nasty environment for this game, this game turns into a grounded pound where you're looking at your running backs as opposed to your wide receivers having a phenomenal game. In KC, if you're looking at Tyreek Hill, if you're looking at McCole Hardman, as a, as a flex option, if you're hurting a wide receiver and you picked up McCole Hardman. Let, yeah, last week, you were not happy with McCole Hardman. Uh, that performance was absolutely horrid. Trust me, I had him on my bench. I did not start him, thank God. Um, but in this game, if it gets really nasty, we saw with Casey and Buffalo, we thought that, that was going to be a shootout. It wound up being a run fest where Clyde Edwards Hilaire, and that's the key player that I was talking about earlier, had 161 yards on 26 attempts. That's a really good performance for him. But now you have Le'Veon Bell in the mix. Here's my thought on how the whole Bell uh, CEH is going to pan out between the twenties. I think that you're going to see a lot of CEH. However, in the red zone where it counts, you're going to see a lot of Le'Veon Bell. Okay. Bell has that ability to punch it in. He has the frame. Edwards Hilaire just does not have the body type to pound it into the end zone. We know that uh, from previous experience, Le'Veon Bell is that back that can, on the goal line, punch it in. We've seen time and time again this year that CEH just does not have that. So make sure that you're using tools like this to make your decisions when you're starting players. And what your expectations for those games are. Okay, guys, I don't want you guys going in thinking that you're going to just blow up with some monster performance against a really bad defense with a wide receiver. Now, if they're bad against the pass, that's one thing. If they're great against the run, that's something. Okay, but if they're just overall bad like the Jets are, this game's going to get out of hand quick. So 
food for thought, something to think about. And remember, if you use the tools that are at your disposal, you can reign supreme. Okay, guys? That's some good stuff. Today is Mango Matic. So, by the way, also, this is hashtag not a sponsor for rain. Also, hashtag not a sponsor for Circle K, who now is having a sale on rain. Uh, you can get them three for $5.50. If you put your phone number in at the register and uh, you can qualify when you buy 10, your next your one of those is free. So, I'm taking advantage of it. Guys, if you have Circle K in your area, please do as well. Okay. Um, I get if you guys like bang or, you know, monster or whatever, but rain, I love me some rain. Uh, if you, if anybody sees this from rain, I will work for energy drinks. Okay, guys. So I'll promote whatever you want. Uh, just give me some energy drinks because I've been up since about 345 this morning, uh, doing, preparing the episode for you guys. Hope you liked it. Remember, Check out your weather, know your team, know your teammates, your league mates, uh, when you're making those trades. Best of luck this week. And this is a kind of a PSA for last night's game. Last night's game, um, Boston Scott, outstanding performance. Carson Wentz, outstanding performance. But if you watch this game, oh my gosh. Can we please just have somebody go above 500 in this league, in this division, so that I don't have to constantly hear about how a sub-500 team should not host a playoff game? Because remember, guys, somebody from the, the NFC East is going to make the playoffs. Hopefully. Hopefully. Um, we'll talk more about that next week. But remember, guys. Dallas, Washington, this week, I might be really, really hyped or really, really sad the next time I see you guys on Monday. Uh, so that is yet to be seen. Washington, please, please. I work with two annoying Cowboy fans, Chris and Leo. I love you guys, but you're annoying as hell when it comes to your, your Dallas team, as I sure I am with Washington. But guys, best of luck this week. Don't forget my sponsors, Keller's Bakery off the Youngsville Highway, 627 Lafayette Street. Find them on Facebook. Make sure you order. Make sure you tell them the Dean sent you gets two free cookies. And uh, Zia of Lafayette behind the Grand Theater on Johnson Street and right in front of Laurel's uh, Health Club on Doucette Road. Go down, check them out. Tell Heath, Tucker, and Leonard, all the guys down there that I said hi. And uh, come in and see us. So, guys, for the Fantasy Football Academy 2020, this has been the Dean. Appreciate all the love and support. Remember, subscribe, like, and share for me. And we'll see you next time, Fantasy Football Academy 2020.